Nightside. 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 This is the Nightside Project. Ha, I can read you like a book. Ha <laughs> ha, you read books. Nightside on KSL. Funniness happens. And I can say whatever I want because I know my wife's not actually listening. Famous last words there, <laughs> Alex. The Nightside Project. Finish the day happy, happy with Ethan Millard and Alex Carey on KSL News Radio. Welcome to the Nightside Project. I'm Ethan Millard here with Alex Carey. The Nightside Project is brought to you by the New Millennium Group. You can learn more about Derek Overstreet and the New Millennium Group at utahsfinancialplanner.com. We want to welcome you to a very special edition of the Nightside Project. This is a what's the word I'm looking for, Alex? This is a a test edition of the Nightside Project. What do you mean? Well, how many because, test editions of the Nightside Project do we have to do? We've done so many test editions of it. Well, once again, the Nightside Project is the place where KSL is going to roll out the little guinea, uh, their little rat maze, mm. the little cage. And guess what? And we're test the ones. out some stuff. And we're the guys. We're those guys punching the little food button. Mm-hmm. Give me that Give me that food button. This is interesting stuff. Let's test it out on the Nightside Project. Mm, turns out so. Alex died. <laughs> We're going to have to send him to science. He got dysentery. Uh, now, this is what's happening. We've got in our in our studio here, we've got cameras. Oh. And this is similar to the KSL on-air studio downstairs, but we're rolling it out in a kind of a whole new way. So this video is going to be available uh, on our Facebook page at some point today. <laughs> we're also recording the is program. It? Is it? Can we confirm? Oh, okay. Yeah, we're going to put it up, right? Becky's handling all I this I didn't know uh, he was like, he's like hey, we're going to put it on KSL 5 News. Tonight at 10 o'clock, you'll see this entire broadcast for the entire news It's going to be 40 minutes of the Nightside Project, <laughs> and they're going to do better than they have in years. <laughs> I but, keep telling them that. Yeah. I keep then, telling them that. Look, just us and Kevin Eubank. That's all you need. Look, I tell KSL TV, people like the Nightside Project, so put it on TV. It'll be huge. <laughs> It'll Ethan, be the biggest show. Can I roll something out for you first to start off the program? I don't know if you know this. Um, I probably don't. But the U.S. Mint and the irrespon Well, let me start it off by saying this. Our irresponsible U.S. Mint, is the Mint also the one who prints money? There's the Because we say Mint for, like, coins. What's yes. the? Yeah, they print the money. But do they do the paper? So the Mint is the paper money, too, right? As far as I know, yeah. Okay, so the paper printers slash Mint... Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know this, but we have been irresponsible in our production of U.S. money since its beginning. What now, do you mean? Ir- in what way have we been irresponsible? Well, because the U.S. dollar is the international sure. standard it is for a currency. Str- no, the, the currency itself is strong. What it is made of specifically, the... Uh, Three parts paper pulp to one part uh, zinc, cotton, linen, <laughs> to uh, all those things, Ethan. Oh, first of the, all, oh, in the paper money, okay. Yes, all first right. of all, none of that paper money is organic. Okay. Well, I wouldn't expect it to be. Well, I think the kind of commitment to organic, uh, you know, cotton and uh, organic paper milling and okay. recycling right. is a commitment we should make. And also, I'm going to step it up and. Uh, a notch because I'm pretty jealous of the people in Scotland because Scotland and their government have made a commitment. They have made a promise to the people, to the Scottish people, that all of their money is vegan. You can eat their money and be totally fine with it. <laughs> so the money is vegan. So they have these new, they have these new, what they call new polymer. Can, can you buy meat with it? <laughs> That's actually not allowed either. Uh, because really, that's the true use for money. I, but see, what's funny about this is they go, Scotland's producers of this new polymer banknotes have confirmed that their cash is free of any animal products, except for the fact in the first line where they just straight up tell you they've made it out of dinosaurs. Oh, and yep. then they say it's, but it's animal free. I think I think it's only right if it's made with any kind of petrochemical. That it be labeled that it's, that it's non-vegan. Well, because Ethan, think about I think you're right. Think about all of those triceratops that that, that died, died for your banknote to make to, to make all, your money. They died. They decomposed and they all flowed into those oil wells. Some baby brontosaurus that was stuck in a tar pit. Oh, is vegan, that how they died? Vegans are the worst. <laughs> vegans I mean, are the worst. Is it too soon to make fun of how the dinosaurs died? 
Baby like dinosaur six- killers. How dare they? How dare they? So well, here's- the Bank of Scotland claims the manufacturer of our notes have confirmed that no animal products have been used in our polymer five pound note. Hold they on. can only confirm that it's in the five dollar bill that no animal products were used, as they just said. And and when does it not become an animal product anymore? I thought that Scotland was using uh, the euro. rawhide. You thought that it used to be a lead because because the twenty dollar bill in Scotland is just pure rawhide. Okay, here's a here's a. Bunnies. Here's a five dollar. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on the little monitor here. A hundred dollar bill in Scotland is just made of of the tears of bunnies. Okay, there. That's a five in, pound note. There it is for the Bank of Scotland, and that's the one that's uh, it's vegan. But that's the only one they confirm is vegan. And Be- at what point does it not become an animal product? Because if it's distilled down enough. Think about Jello, Ethan, which vegans refer to as horse hoof salad or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. At what point is it not animal product anymore? When it's refined down, because they're fine with plastics that are made from uh, dead animals. Dead animals, but they're but they've been dead for millions of years, so they become a totally different product. Mm, that must be it. That must be it. But see, these other things have been dead for a long time, and they are a totally different product. I just don't get it. Could I, I could I point I just, something out? I don't get the vegans, man. Could I point something out that a wise person once told me? <laughs> if that wise person is not is not like a, is not a professional athlete, then I'm not going to listen to you. You you don't think it's weird that the country that brought us haggis oh, okay. is now starting to dabble in veganism? At least in currency form. Hey, but I love that the only we can only confirm the uh, the 5 pound note. It's going to. It's totally animal free. Twenty dollar bills still made with the blood of our enemies. <laughs> All right, uh, Ethan. Smells like freedom. I've got something else for you, unless you've uh, unless no, you want to roll something. I, I was going to roll out a little Zen headline here before oh, we take a quick break. Oh, okay. Are you fine with that? I guess. Well, <laughs> whether you are you are or not. No, you're doing Zen headline, it's man. Happening. It's fine. I'm. Check relaxed. this out. The Jim- vegan the vegan thing gets me all sorts of worked up, and so I'm glad the Zen headline. It's because you're a past a vegan, and yeah. as a former vegan, we're the mo- we're the most ardent yeah. meat eaters. Yeah, no. What's going on? Hey, my, uh, is my mic not turned to the yeah, right yeah, way? Yeah, yeah, F- but you you sound just fine though. I feel like, I mean, it looks weird, but I feel like it's uh. No, it's the right way, man. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's what just to tell that you. that plugs on weird. Well, how about this? <laughs> Boom. All right. So check this out. This is out of Red Bud, Illinois. Jim Ford, you know Jim Ford. <laughs> He's been repoing cars for more than 20 years. Oh, yeah, that Jim Ford. And he got, you know, an email notice from a bank assigning him to repossess a 1998 Buick Century oh, yeah. from Stanford and Pat Kipping. Okay. So fine. This is what he does. He shows up at the, in the dead of night, throws it on his tow truck, speeds away. Uh, he headed to the couple's home late at night, noticed the car in the garage. He knew they were elderly, and he didn't see any lights on, so he decided he was going to wait until the next day to break the news. I didn't want to disturb them. Yeah, and you don't, have to, te- you don't have to tell them, though, if you're repoing, right? You just take it. Yeah, you can. But, but, he, I mean, but it was he, a courtesy that he thought maybe. He's okay. more of a gen- gentleman repossessor. When he finally made the call... Pat Kipping answered the phone. He told her the bank had hired him to take back the car, on which they owed about three months' worth of payments, so three months behind. That's a quick That's a quick repo. Kipping told him that she'd tried to work something out with the bank but failed to reach an agreement. They had $30 in their bank account. Oh. And they just, there was no way. Yeah. It was very, very sad, Pat Kipping told the Post-Dispatch. Stan and I cried. We were very emotional because we need our car. The couple's failing health has contributed to their financial hardship. Sure. Stanford Kipping is battling Alzheimer's and congestive heart failure. Pat Holy suffers cow. from diabetes. They can't even pay their medical and pharmacy bills. And so they've got a lot of debt. They've got are growing we, debt. Is, are you rolling this story out because we need to start a GoFundMe? Because that's where I'm going with this. No, 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 man. It's handled. I, it's, oh, I, it's handled. I do have, to restart, a, I do have to restart the I know, music, because this cause. is basically the longest backstory ever. So the repo man, Ford, headed there. And uh, as he towed the Kipping's car away, he knew he had to do something. 
So he pulled over about a block away from their house. He called the bank, and he made the arrangement for he himself to raise the remaining $2,200 the Kippings owed on their car. That's how much they owed on the car? They owed $2,200. He turned to GoFundMe, set up an account, and went to bed. The next morning, he had $3,300 donated. There you go. Paid off the car. I love it, man. Gave the gave the excess money to the couple, which was over a thousand dollars in cash. Can you believe that? I love it. Look, people are good. People are good. You cannot look at. You're going to get a lot of news stories from the powers that be, like the organization we work it's for. It's not over. That will try to convince you that things are bad, but people are good still. It's not over. Okay. Pat gave them their car back, clean title. Gave him the thousand dollars extra. Nice. And then thought, you know what? I bet we can do better than this. We could bilk people for a little bit more charity. Went back to GoFundMe, and uh, he's already got another fifty six hundred dollars. Look at that for this couple. I love elderly it. couple. Isn't that amazing? That's really great. Uh, Ethan, in we got to take a break here. In a very cliche uh, fashion, you cut me off. And uh, tell me that we're going to do something when we come back. And so we will. When we return to the Nightside Project, I've got a story (laughs) that you do not want to miss. Specifically, Ethan, this one has to do with, we've talked a lot about what kids need to learn in school. What are the things that are the most important? We've heard people say, look, they need more finance classes starting in third grade. They need more uh, sewing classes. What is it that you think it might be? Well, in Alaska, they've got the solution to teach the kids to move into the future. We'll tell you what it is next. Stick around on the Nightside Project. Okay, welcome back. It is the Nightside Project. Ethan Miller and Alex Curie here with you. Keep those downloads coming. Uh, download the podcast, rate, review, um, all those things. We, always, we have a motto here at the Nightside Project, which is tell a friend, teach a neighbor. And I've uh, I've done a lot of preaching of the Nightside gospel by yeah. showing my actual, like, in their 30s neighbors who are looking at their phones and they're all, so now, do I do I go to iTunes for this uh, podcast? And I'm all, you have an iPhone 7. There is a button Big that purple is purple. Button. It says podcast on it. I'm not Everyone's trying to, got it. I'm not trying to belittle you. But I'm also like, why would you buy that phone if you have no idea what the things are? And then he's all, and then he did this this move. Here's my favorite move too. Well, I just I'm not familiar with the podcasting. I'm not really I don't really know what it is. And I'm like, if people aren't podcasting, Ethan, I did the I went to the KSL zoo party last night. Oh, how was that? I know that sounds like a weird rave, <laughs> where all of our bosses, you know, were throwing glow sticks around. But that wasn't it. It was the zoo lights for our Christmas party. I went to it, and when I say Christmas party, it's a bunch of clients, right? Yeah. So we go to it, and I live right by the zoo, so I'm like, eh, I'll go. So we go to it, and this lady was like, I was getting hot chocolate for my kids. I'm like, hey, grab this hot chocolate. And someone goes, hey, that voice sounds familiar. Is that Ethan or Alex? That's what the lady says. <laughs> Is that Ethan or Alex? I go, oh, I'm Alex. And she's like, oh, my gosh, I miss you on the radio so much. And I was like, hey, you can podcast. Yeah, it's not the same. I go, really? I go, well, it actually is exactly the same. Yeah. And no commercials. And we recorded every day. And she's like, looked at me like, how does this black magic work? <laughs> Did and you have to get out her phone? Look, I'll show it right no. now because we're still we're still doing the camera thing. So if you're watching this on Facebook, uh, don't do a tutorial. No, 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 no. I'm not Watch doing this. this. I'm not doing a tutorial. If you're watching man. on Facebook, this is what you got to look for. Okay, yeah, see yeah. that button there on your phone? It's just a purple button. This is just podcast. press it, and then there's a little search, and you look for the Nightside Project, and just that's it. Ethan. And then you've got the Nightside Project. All right, uh, on your phone. <laughs> on your phone. Ethan, we talk a lot about uh, what kids need to do to be more prepared for the yeah. world. What well, the you do, but well, okay, you talk a lot about. So, that. one of our bonus episodes we're going to put up uh, one of these days is uh, I is Amy Iverson talking about phones for Christmas for your kids. Yeah, your kids are asking for phones for Christmas. The yeah. question is, what is the best age for it? Things like that, and and. Um, she was like, you got to really go through a full on like teaching them how to use the phone and teaching you guys together how to basically move forward using this technology in a safe way, blah, blah, blah. There's all sorts of pitfalls and all sorts of positive stuff that can come from sure. you using this uh, technology. But uh, they're getting it all wrong, Ethan. In Alaska, they're starting early with kindergartens with, are you ready for this? Yeah, let's hear it. Kindergartners in Alaska 
are all learning how to butcher a moose. Huh. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's not just like a one-time, like, hey, cool. (laughs) One time they brought a moose in and they showed us how to butcher it. No, no, no. It is every year at this in this school district, they have a one week butchering of a moose during moose season. Okay, and uh, I love this idea. I think it's amazing. I, well, look, think of all the things that we teach that we want to teach kids. It's always trying to get away from stuff like this, but they're like, hey, no, no, no. Basic skill wise, you want to learn. You want to keep kids learning about finances. You want to keep you know learn how to have a bank account. Learn how to uh, you know, I remember taking home ec when I was in middle school and I was like, I'm taking home ec, bro, instead of shop. And the kids are like, oh, you're such a girl. And I was like, nah, man, the class is full of girls. I'm like, I'm so smart. <laughs> and then I find myself like, I remember Miss, uh, her name was like Miss, Miss Bianchi is showing me. She's like, yep. Okay. Now take, now use your thimble. And I'm like, mm-hmm. and I'm like, focus. And I remember sewing this teddy bear. And being so proud of it and being like, I can do it. And guess what? I sew buttons on all my stuff now. Whenever uh, my pants tear in the crotch inevitably, (laughs) guess who can sew it up? This guy. You do. Oh, yeah. Did you ever date any of the girls in the the class? Uh, Absolutely not. I had no chance. Oh. Because that was kind of your boast, right? (laughs) Oh. You know, you have these ideals. But I'll tell you what did happen. I I really liked the the thing. I there were skills in there, and I know that you might be able. To, and I am not handy at all. But my dad was basically the shop class. Yeah. My dad had a table saw and had all the woodworking skills possible, and he made me do, uh, you know, stuff. If if somebody sat in and goes, here's how you butcher a moose. I'm looking at pictures right now too. I wish you, Ethan, just Google uh, kindergartners butcher moose, and put up. Well, is that inappropriate? Well, the vegan, uh, well, I don't know. Let's will see the vegan here. listeners. Uh, no, it's just kindergartners, like you know, going to town on this moose. I don't know if it's uh, inappropriate as much as it is just it's life, man. Uh, kindergartners butcher moose. Yes, Alaska. Alaska. Yeah, yeah. Let's so, see what we got here. So this, so this wide open spaces uh, <laughs> website was like, we thought this was kind of interesting. At first, they thought it was grotesque, and then they were like, "Yeah." They brought in these native uh, Alaskans. Right, yeah, I found it. I found it. I got it right here. So look at these pictures. Okay. Oh yeah, they're pulling meat off the bones and but, everything. But look, I mean, to the to the level of what they're using this these uh, they're using every every bit of this animal. Oh man, and look at that. They're making. Look at that roast. Look, they made those. Right well, and here's the other thing. Oh yeah, that roast is nice. And right? look at that in the back. They made those guitars out of the moose. <laughs> <laughs> that lady's wearing a moose shirt. So I'm. Re- <laughs> I think that I think that this kind of thing. While I don't want my kid to go to school and be like, "This is a pig head." Start digging into the. Let's make some head cheese. Yeah. I do think that there is benefit to your kids think knowing that this is a way of life that they can lead if they choose. And guess what? During the uh, apocalypse. These kids are gonna have a, a hoof up on us. So hey, if, if all these, if all this talk of butchering innocent <laughs> baby animals, no, oh, that moose was fully grown. That fully grown itty bitty baby moose. <laughs> uh, if all that stressed you out, why would you do this? I've got a treat for you. It's another Zen headline. Is it gonna be one of those cliche stories of an animal was found two thousand miles from its house? It was a little hungry. A little tired. It was trapped and butchered by a pack of kindergartners. <laughs> You're terrible. All right, let's hear it, man. You better get my you better get my day happy this here. This is out of Davie, Florida. When a group of uh, Nova Southeastern University baseball players realized a new teammate from Venezuela wouldn't be going home for a three week holiday break like the rest of the team, they all decided to pitch in pitch baseball team. Oh my gosh. Last week they pooled their money. To buy a plane ticket that will allow Ronnie Orta to return to his hometown of Petara, Venezuela, to spend the holidays with his family. That's awesome. He grew up in a poor Venezuelan neighborhood, uh, but was great at baseball, and that won him a chance to play in the United States at this university in Florida. Isn't that awesome? Um, I I would think it was awesome, except for the fact that he had to fly home to Venezuela. <laughs> they literally. Made things worse for him. Come on. Aside from the fact that he'll be, he's able glad to, to go. he'll be able to eat, uh, you know, his mom's homemade um, 
stuff. Moose, I'm assuming. <laughs> a famous moose Venezuelan burgers. moose. So I'm Hol- as- the holiday moose. So aside from that, we literally are reading stories about how they're like Venezuela is getting emergency shipments of toilet paper this well, week. Well, I get that. I get that he, for sure. But yeah, you know was, he was, was it, happy to go well, visit Well, hold on. Was family. he? Because was it one of those things where he's like, yeah, man, I, can't, I don't get to go home and see my parents. I guess I'm going to have to eat In-N-Out Burger and hang out in my dorm room. Do you think he was tempted when they presented him with the money? Do you think he was tempted to say, can I just stay here, guys? You mind if I just stay here? Should we just throw a party with this money? Because you realize you're sending me back to Venezuela, right? Uh, where a place I kind of... Plan to never go back to. All right, uh, man. There are you're being mean about. No, I'm Venezuela. not being mean. I'm I'm just saying that Venezuela. Look, family's family. I mean, if if somebody think about like in the think about the worst places in the world in terms of like developmental. You know, the the country needs to develop a lot more. Um, family's still family. You still want to see mama. Right. You still want to be able to uh, hang out. And I'll tell you too. Um, the Latino people and South Americans, they love themselves from Christmas. Oh, man, do they love Christmas. Yeah. So let's thank our sponsors. We'd like to thank the New Millennium Group, utahsfinancialplanner.com. If you want to retire earlier than you thought possible, utahsfinancialplanner.com. We'll see you all on the flip side, everybody. Everybody.